Hello everybody and welcome to a Let's Play of Crusader Kings 2 where we're going to take and uh, I don't think y'all can see it because I'm looking at the game rules but we're going to take the chief uh, the chieftain the chief ten uh, I can't talk today again the chieftain of the county of Kanakta and we're gonna have a little bit of fun in Ireland uh, you know Ireland is actually pretty easy to be completely honest it's a relatively um, safe starting zone because you do have a bunch of autonomous little chiefdoms in the game and uh, I think a lot of people have referred to it as newbie island but we're gonna go ahead and dive into it and we're gonna try to unify and form the kingdom of Ireland and then see if we can't maybe take on um, the Kingdom of Wales or the Kingdom of England, you know, Wessex, Mercia, and um, uh, let's see, Wessex, Mercia, Wales. There are actually a couple of Welsh kingdoms and a Breton kingdom, as well as Scotland exists, so they may provide some more targets. But, that, you know, I think initially, if we're going to set a goal uh, for how long this is going to go, because as anyone who's played Crusader Kings 2 knows, you can play this forever and a day. So, uh, but I think our first, yeah, first goal is we will try to unify the island of Ireland. Um, and if we can do that, then we'll kind of assess and see if there's anything else that we can do. So, as you can read from the screen, you are playing as an Irish Catholic chief. So, really what that means is that I can hold tribal and fort holdings without penalties. I can hold temple and tribal and fort holdings. Uh, I use prestige to build and upgrade certain uh, features and facets of my tribal holding. And uh, when you get to 500 prestige, you can actually call the tribes together and form a tribal army. That is uh, one of the benefits of being a tribe. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see if there's anything. Um, I can actually take concubines, which is interesting. So, anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and close that out <clears throat> and uh, kind of pick up. So, this is the this is the county of Canacta, if I'm saying that correctly. I hope I am. Um, being from Alabama, we have something called Conecuh sausage, and every time I see that, I want to call it Conecuh, even though it's not spelled the same. So let's uh, let's we'll dive into this. Uh, I have an unmarried heir, so I am this guy. And it looks like I have a son. Just good. Already had a pen here. So, but we need to get him married. And he is actually really good at diplomacy. He is decent at intrigue and learning. But he could use a little help with sh uh, stewardship. And he really could use some help with his marshal. So we're going to... Um, how old is he? He's 20. So... I believe, ooh, you know, she may not be that bad. Midas touched. I kind of like that. Let's um, let's go ahead and get that lined up, and just for kicks and giggles, who's the oldest lady out here? Let's get this one lined up for my. Oh man, before I do that, actually, let's um, let's see. Uh, ooh, he needs. He needs some help. So, but before I do that, we'll get some cheap, uh, you know, some cheap achievements. We're going to say that we have an ambition to get married. And so, if we do that, we get 10 piety, and we will go ahead and find ourselves one of the older ones. Um, she is not good. And, but she could prove to be interesting. She doesn't like me. Probably because I'm old. Um, sure. Why not? I, I think we can make this work out. So we'll go ahead and get that. Now we need to have a character focus. And uh, realistically, this is just so difficult. Um, I think I'm going to take theology to... Well, I say that.
I say that, I'm not sure that I am going to do that. In fact, what I think I'm going to do, just for kicks and giggles, is take hunting. Primarily because it's going to boost our marshal a little bit, which will help us when it comes to our levy size. But more importantly, what it will do is it will give us plus one health. I'd like this guy to stay, even though he is 59. I'd like him to stay alive long enough um, to potentially get a claim on the county of Brifney. So we can maybe, just maybe, I don't know, he may die quickly. In fact, I've done this playthrough just a couple of times, um, testing out this game, and every time I've done it, he, he, he gives up the ghost, dies, whatever you want to call it, relatively quickly. So uh, now we can go and take a look at our counselors, and we actually save our spy master who is atrocious. That's uh, not the worst one in the world. This, our son, God bless him, is actually going to be really good at potentially fabricating claims. So let's um, go ahead and do that, and I want you to train troops. Um, da, 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 da. we'll have you build a legend. Um, just to make sure, protect us. And you can, I don't know what you can do. Mm, let's have you proselytize over here just in case. I may be wasting that. Um, I need to read a little more in there. So we need to designate a regent. And I think our son, um, since he will inherit, will be regent. And these titles, these minor titles, we're going to use to try to um, boost some of the opinion that we uh, potentially could have. So uh, he is my kinsman. He is the heir. So we definitely want to try to give these to folks who... Um, for lack of a better term, matter. And um, at this point, you know, we're going to definitely give Cutbearer to the Sun. Commander, okay, it looks like we are set to fire this thing up. What does this say? Um, has become the master of the hunt. That is great. He has become Cutbearer. And we will go ahead and start it. And we're going to run it at speed too, because it'll give me plenty of chance to talk. If minor events pop up, we can address them. So now we have this. Uh, they're getting married. We can collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. Um, I want the gold, and that's fantastic. So I've now filled that ambition, which means I can pick a new one, and our son is going to get married. Which is great. So I think our next one is going to be... Uh, I really don't want this guy having any kids. Um, primarily because he already has an heir. So we'll just say a mass wealth. Why not? We'll take a look at our holding. Um, you know... I want to try to save the money immediately while at some point the goal will become will be to become a feudal society so we can set the right secession laws um, really you know it, right now and you know we probably need to take a look at that so our laws right now are pretty basic we don't have any realm laws um, obligations okay let's take a look at this so the white stack part of this hunting scenario and we'll get back to laws in just a second. But part of the hunting um, ambition is you get random events where you're going to go hot hunt a white stag. I have yet to catch it. And um, if any of you have seen the Chronicles of Narnia, um, I would advise you not to follow the white stag. But um, so this basically says, uh, lately you have, and I, you'll have to, you have heard uh, persistent rumors from peasants and travelers in the wild wilds that a strange mythical beast has been sighted in your realm. It's a white stag, powerful and elusive. The common folk claim it comes from another world and that the hunter who claims it will be imbued with divine power. Alright, we gotta find this white stag. 
So as this goes on, um, you know, you continue down the path to hunt the white stag. So anyways, um, back to the laws, you basically had inheritance laws, which you start off with agnatic uh, gavel kind. And um, you can change to elective gavel kind and tanistry, which is unique to um, a lot of the Celtic tribes. And then we have our obligations, and um, right now, I think we're just going to leave everything be. Um, our vassals, we have one vassal right now, and he sadly prefers the Pope. Now that may change in time, um, but, and I could give him a gift. I could send him a gift. I could lose 21 ducats, which I'm not willing to forego right now, but if I were to give him 21 ducats, it would improve his opinion, and we would begin to receive... Um, income from the church because he'd be paying taxes to me the whole nine yards we would have access to his levies but right now we actually seven seven hundred eight levies um, seven hundred eight in our levy not not levies listen to me seven hundred seven hundred and eight in our levy and that's not really that bad compared to this guy who is actually at war I think that we can um, hopefully subdue this gentleman it would be ideal. Plus, to be able to form this duchy, I mean, if you want to take a look at the, uh, I believe it is the duchy, de jure duchy of Connacht. And that's exactly what it is. We need to have the chieftain of Brefni and the chieftain of Connacht. We have one of those, but we need the second one. And in order to get that, we need to fabricate a claim on it. Um, that would be ideal, to be able to take those over. Basically, have two chiefdoms and then be able to have a greater source of income because I want to say that it's probably going to cost us around 150 gold um, and maybe a little more maybe 180 I can't remember exactly but it'll be somewhere around that number for us to uh, form the duchy um, but it would give us additional holdings this this lovely guy like us has a uh, pretty much a basic tribe tribal holding and then he has a bishopric um, so anyways back to the hunting back to the wonderful hunting uh, little scenario many events I guess these are more kind of I know they have a technical name what would you call this really these uh, random events that's a great way great great way to say that so great news my lord we have received credible reports of a recent sighting of the great white stag in the county of Canacta all right let's saddle a horse I'm 59 years old. I'm amazed that this 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 strapping old guy can actually get on a horse and uh, go hunt a white stag. And so, as uh, most of you who have known who know, but if those of you that don't know, um, your uh, your your advisor, your counselors, their scores affect. How well they do what you're asking them to do so because our uh, son is chancellor and he has a relatively high diplomacy score um, he has a 16% chance to actually almost 17% if you round um, chance to fabricate a claim each year which is pretty good so basically um, basically my arbitrary arbi oh, I'm gonna botch this my arbitrariness just cost me several gold coins um, sadly I lost too much I'm not even sure what the heck that was about but okay not a whole lot going on in Ireland now um, I will cut it on the realm map so everybody can see um, Scotland right now is up here and I want to say that this is a Welsh type kingdom that may actually be um, controlled. Well, we'll get back to that. So, anyways, you have gathered your followers and your hunting dogs. You have saddled your horse and prepared your weapons. You are ready to set out and hunt the great white stag. An epic hunt it shall be. So, looking at the map, Ireland still is pretty much altogether separate, which is exactly how we want it. We want to be able to um, essentially take Brefni and then potentially press our claims in the north or the south. 
So, uh, back to the hunt. We uh, spend several weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but to no avail. However, you find that you rather enjoy being out in the wilds. All this uh, daily physical activity, it makes you feel stronger. So, we have a 20% chance that we can become um, brawny, which would really be awesome. And I don't think we became brawny, sadly. We are still wroth, arbitrary, and basically we won't give up. We'll keep hunting this stag. We're craving, oh man, we are just terrible. Huh, we are just terrible. But we are Midas touched, um, which is not a bad trait. Our son is a, uh, has the gray eminence, which is actually another wonderful four star education. Um, I could speak on that, but when you're actually assigning your children guardians, you can, um, it's better to assign them to a, um, basically to a guardian, make them a ward of their guardian. Um, and the guardian, is, it's better if they have a four, a level four education. And um, that's primarily because it there's a stronger chance that they will receive a level four education and get much better stats. Now, at the end of the day, if you can somehow line it up and produce a genius, that's really what you want. But the one thing that this game has taught me, because it truly is a game of characters, is that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you never put all your eggs in one basket because that character could easily die in a plot, they could die on the field of battle, random events, they can get sick and die, um, they can fall ill. I mean, I had a character the other day when I was playing that got stressed and then became ill and then quickly bit the dust at, you know, the ripe old age of 33 or 34. So, you know, this is definitely a game of characters. It's also how you're managing your lineage and your manpower and really being able to assess the field and make the necessary moves when it is most advantageous for you. But it's a fun game nevertheless. Um, it's definitely one where you can create some very unique nation and culture combinations. So you know going back to it you know there isn't a kingdom of Ireland yet there is a kingdom of Scotland um, England is still split between Northumbria Mercia Wessex and then you've got Jorvik who controls what is modern-day York and then you've got um, I believe this is East Anglia and then you've got a pretty much a the king of Cornwall the petty king of Cornwall who's um, Breton or really you know the Romano British culture that existed post the fall of the Roman Empire and then you've got two Welsh petty kingdoms right here and I believe that this is actually culturally Welsh but is actually controlled by this gentleman who is Catholic interesting he is Catholic what is his ethnicity that is fascinating I'm assuming he's Welsh. He's got to be Welsh. Yes, he is. He is Welsh. So you really kind of got a pocket of Welsh here, a pocket of Welsh here, Breton, and then these gentlemen. I believe they're going to call them Anglo-Saxon, 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 Scottish. Most of these guys are Irish now. Um, Jorvik is definitely Norse. And this character here is also Norse. So when you start off in the Viking Age, which is not the latest start, but when you start off in the Viking Age, most of Ireland is ethnically Irish. And uh, really the, the heavy hitter, the only guy who owns two different counties, is this king, the uh, petty king of Mead or Maide. I'm not sure exactly how you say it because I don't speak Irish. But not a lot happening right now. Um, that's one of the things when you start off early, there isn't a whole lot that happens. But we can at least check and see kind of what's going on um, with uh, at least our heir. So our heir is married. And he, let's see, he is actually, does she like him? Yeah, that's, she's good. She likes him. Um, she is interesting. 
she would not be a character that I would want to try to have an affair on. So, hopefully. And that was the doorbell. Um, let's see, he is actually entrusted with one of my wards. So, one of my kinsmen, which I believe is... Uh, if I remember with this start, you kind of have a brother who potentially has some children, so... But, nevertheless, we wait. We wait to fabricate a claim. And I think that, honestly, to tell you the truth, what I will probably do is if I can get a claim on Brithney, and then get a claim on one of these three, well, we'll talk about it. It's the Rise of the Shia. That's great. Let them fight amongst themselves. So if we can get Brithney, create a duchy, and then snake down here and get two of these three counties and create the Duchy of Munster, then I think that would, if we could become a double duke, that would really pave the way for us to be able to move forward and pretty much unite Ireland. Um, and that's really all that we have to do. And as always, let's see. My father-in-law, who was the Doge, was murdered. That's interesting. He's my age. Unfortunate for him. So, um, basically a farmer told me how his boar had managed to break into his neighbor's hoggery, and the result was uh, seven small... Uh, wait, hold on, wait a minute. And the result was seven small piglets. Now his neighbor demanded compensation. He can't afford, and they need me to tell them what to do. Keep one piglet, hey, <laughs> basically, keep one piglet each, the rest belong to me. I'm okay with that, that's more money. Um, if you want to take a look, getting back to the whole uh, du jour system, um, we need to control three of these, three out of five. And to tell you the truth, if we were to get the Duchy of Connacta, Connect, really, the Duchy of Leicester. And in theory, if we were to get the Petty Kingdom, this, I mean, you know, there, there, you can skin this cat several ways. I'm more looking at what can I take that requires me to fabricate the least number of claims before I can. Well, basically, what I'm really trying to say as I fumble through my words is if you can create the Kingdom of Ireland eventually you will have be able to basically just declare de jure wars which would be nice no more hey let's uh, fabricate a claim but in the meantime we are now just waiting waiting to see if our son ticks that way which he has a like I said he has a pretty decent chance now we could because we have a strong claim on this, we could go to war with Kildara. Sadly, 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 he is currently defending against Ivar the Boneless. And to be able to initiate that war, I have to have 100 piety. I don't have 100 piety. If this lovely gentleman at the ripe age of 61 were to die, this strong claim on Kildara and what is. Ultimately, I mean, I'm just going to call it by its actual name today, Dublin. Um, when when he dies, that becomes a weak claim, and we, we can't press that. I don't think we can press that. In fact, I'm fairly positive, but we'll find out. So, we wait, and basically another one of the world events, the Magyar Nomads are no more. Um, basically they're going to settle in Hungary that is intriguing as that has nothing to do with me seeing that Hungary is over here and we are over here so now we wait but I guess we can go over while we wait we have no powerful factions which is great um, we do have a successor that is appointed which is great 
Uh, military wise we are not getting any support from our vassals because the bishop likes the Pope more than us technology wow there can be times where you can get modifiers to upgrade it we're not going to be actively generating any sort of technology point gain because we're tribal and as I said the laws are pretty vanilla um, Feudal taxation. Um, I, you know, we could change a few laws here. I'm not going to do that just yet. As soon as we form a duchy, we will be able to slowly work our way towards high tribal organization, which is what we want to be able to go feudal. Um, but for the meantime, um, I think what we're going to do is just continue to be tribal because. Uh, there are some benefits to that. Now, ultimately, feudal societies, in my opinion, are better than tribal societies because they generate more money, they have stronger fortifications, they have larger levies, uh, but that's why our Ireland is such a good start if you're new to the game because it is relatively easy. You're surrounded by a bunch of independent, autonomous tribes, and so it makes the game easier now by all means, you can still find yourself in a scenario where you get game over relatively quickly. But it's, uh, it's a okay. So we've got two events that have uh, popped up. So we'll go with the first one. I gave the priest a scolding today when he dared ask me his rightful legion lord for a donation. Isn't he living on my sufferance? Haven't I allowed him to collect money for himself and his parish? How dare he? Um, my son overheard this, uh, overheard it, so we'll see what happens there. The next one, your kinsman um, has sent you a gift. It's a small puppy. Uh, yes, I will accept the gracious gift, and we will name him Faithful. I would have named him Fred. So anyways, after scolding the priest, I, felt I, I, le I left fuming with anger and was ready to uh, slap whoever it was that touched my arm to stop me. In front of me stood my son, who told me that the priest certainly deserved the scolding given all I had done for him in the church. And it looks like that all that's going to do is increase his opinion of me. Which would matter if he were a vassal. But as he is just one of my uh, subjects, it just makes him like me more. And we can see that there. So, have you produced an heir yet? She is pregnant. Okay, we're gonna have a grandkid. That's awesome. Um, that is actually really good news. So hopefully it will be a. Uh, let's see. What is that character's ambition? He wants to have a son. She has no ambitions right now, which is okay. That is a okay. Still, could it would be really nice if the son would fabricate a claim? Um, so, daughter, we have a granddaughter. That is fantastic. They need to have a son. So once again, we wait as we get up in age. Now we do have a few things going for us, even though we get old. We um, we uh, have a hunting dog, which is plus one health. We are currently on a hunting focus, which is another plus one health. So this guy's life may um, may uh, may for whatever reason actually be extended a little longer. He's 61. Uh, like I said, generally speaking, he died. I've never seen him live when I've, I've done this a couple of times when I was just testing out things. I've never had him live past 63 or 64, but this could be the one playthrough where he actually does it. You know, kind of looking outside of uh, the island of Ireland, you can see that Jorvik, and this is pretty standard if you start off in the Viking Age, Jorvik goes to war with Northumbria pretty quickly, and they pretty much, in every playthrough that I've seen, they beat them, they beat them to a pulp. 
Now what will be interesting is what happens with if there is a ambitious AI that decides that they're going to try to form the, uh, the, the Kingdom of Wells, which could make things a little interesting. Um, and then, let's see... Your dog is growing quickly and is no longer a little puppy. He runs fast and is a, has a keen nose. Your dog handlers praise his good character. So we get plus 10 prestige for that. I guess uh, tribal leaders like to see that their uh, chief knows how to train a dog. I would, I mean, I guess in tribal societies that's a thing. Gives you a little bit of uh, street cred. Oh, that guy knows how to train a dog. But we are going to pause the game because we are about out of time and we're going to make a cut right about here. Uh, the, the goal hopefully is to keep these at right around 30 minutes. So we will pick up in part two and uh, if you like what you saw, don't hesitate to leave a like or drop us a comment and I want to thank you for watching and if you want to continue to see uh, more gaming content subscribe because um, we've got I've got plenty of stuff recorded that should be um, pretty consistent and being released but y'all have a good one and we'll pick up next time